Don't overthink it. It's just paint. Welcome back to another episode of Paint Society, the channel where the learning doesn't stop when the video ends. Today, we're here with Scorpion Paint and we're working on a project of his. Now, let me show you how we got to this point right here. As you can see, this car is all ready for its base and its clear coat. But how did it get to that point? Well, Pedro got all the parts, all the front end. We got the hood, the fenders, everything. He got everything replaced on the vehicle. See this car? The owner got it at the auction for dirt cheap. It didn't even run him. Well, the owner just wants to do a quick flip. So what Pedro did is he went ahead and he sealed everything off of the car. And then from there, what he did is he put a coat of base on there, let that all dry, got it all back together. And then from there, what you can do is you can run over it with like a six to 800 grit, smooth it all out. So now everything is on the car. It's gonna be a lot easier to paint. So what you see here is just one coat of base just scuffed up. And that's where we're gonna pick it up and paint the rest of the vehicle. And the man is here, Pedro. Make sure that you uh, go ahead and subscribe to his YouTube channel. A lot of great information as far as my Spanish speaking audience does all his videos in Spanish. And even if you don't understand the language, you can still learn a lot. And when dealing on a car on auction and a very expensive car, we did tape a couple things off because it's not sure how to take it apart and we don't want to break anything on a very expensive car. What this could lead to way down the road if you didn't really scuff really, really good is you could get some minor, minor, minor uh, peeling. So make sure that you do scuff completely everywhere if you are gonna do something just like that. Of course, my recommendation is if you can remove as much as possible. So we have the front bumper, the same exact thing has been done over here. Let's talk right now about clear base and why we're gonna use it. So basically this is a clear base coat and a lot of you guys are confused, where do I get this? Well, I'm gonna put some in the description. Uh, House of Color makes a clear transparent base coat. It's used for a variety of things. Let's say you're doing a tape job and you put down your base coat and you wanna put a uh, tape over that. Well, you're gonna wanna put something like this over or let's say you're blending metallics just like this. This is gonna help you fill in the micro scratches and give you a good visual aid. How is my base blending? So we're gonna put this down first and then from there we'll go into our base coat. Today we're gonna to be using PPG products so we'll learn a little bit about that as well. Let's get in the booth and start laying this down. And we're using a Walcom HD base coat gun set around 22 PSI. Bringing it over to here, we're gonna go all the way up to about three inches right at the end of the door handle. You can see we're following about a 75% overlap. And this clear base is great because it's like another surface just to kind of block out any sort of little minor, minor imperfection. It's really gonna help you out and give you a smoother end result. You can see when we're laying it down, you wanna keep a nice 75% to 80% overlap, get a good reach over the whole entire vehicle. And Pedro will just come here and pick it right back up. You always wanna start at one edge of the car and move across, never start in the middle and move out. We wanna keep that wet edge. And this is the wet edge right here. That is the continuous wetness of edge moving across the whole entire vehicle. It doesn't stop until it gets to the very, very end of the door. And that is how you do a complete paint job and keep the whole thing nice and smooth. We'll allow this to dry for just a little bit, about maybe five, 10 minutes, and we'll hop right into our base coat. Now here's the paint. This is DVC by PPG. It's a pretty good paint line. Now I will tell you that there are a few different reducers you can choose on a metallic or a silver you want to use as hot as you can for the temperature but uh, we were using an 85 and it's right around 80 degrees today so pretty much this is going to be one to one so this is a half gallon right here so one part of this and one part of this will make our paint and then we'll move on later to the uh, clear coat and then mix up one to one you can either use one to one here or since it's one to one we'll go five to ten one part one part and we'll go to the other 10. Now, if you're not sure of your mixing ratio, you can go ahead and check the technical data sheet online. Just type in whatever product it is and it'll come up in a PDF form. Or you can ask your paint rep or the people that sold you a paint paint store should be able to get that information for you. 
Now these are the two base coat guns that you can use for a very tough metallic. We have the TV1 B plus 1.3 and of course we do have our HD wall Tom Carbonero base coat gun. Both excellent guns. I'll put both of them in the description so you can pick from. They are a little bit pricey but if you're doing this professionally well you won't mind paying a little bit extra to get a really really good result. We'll go ahead and pour it into our mixing cup since it's already pre-mixed. We'll start spraying on the car and I'll show you some tips and tricks along the way to help you out. Now pressure will vary from uh, paint gun to paint gun. Over here we're going to adjust it to around 20 psi. Moving along here we're going to attack it in the same way but we're only going to go a little bit into the first part of the door first. We're not going to use the base on the whole entire door because remember it's a blend. So since we've already cut it in on the inside that means we painted the inside and we have uh, put sealer and base and stuffed it down. You can see the coverage is that much better. Yes, although it might take a little bit more time, it's going to be a lot quicker once it hits the booth, all right? And we can ensure that everything is gonna match. You can see that Pedro's following that same type of pattern with around 75% overlap. And you can see it's really, really, really laying down really nice. So just keep things nice and consistent and you're not gonna have any problem with model. Don't worry if you have a little bit model on the first coat. That's not a big, big problem. What you can do is we can fix that up in the second or third coat using different ways to mix up the paint or different techniques. What we're looking to get in this first and second coat is the car basically just covered. And that's what we're doing here. We're getting everything covered and we're starting our initial blend into the doors. And that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna allow this to flash for a good five to 10 minutes before we hit up our second coat. Let's hit up our bumper right now. Now, same thing on our bumper. Since this is a brand new bumper, we're obviously gonna base the whole entire thing. Now, there's no worries about color match here because all the adjacent parts to this actual bumper are getting painted. That would be the hood and the fenders. Now, if we take a look at that first coat, we can see that there is just a little bit of model. Now, that model is not because of technique. That model is because of coverage. You can see that there's no model on the door because it is covered there but we have a little bit light coverage and that is fine what i don't want you guys to do is try to fix this all at once what i want you to do is to allow this to dry now let's say you have some dust or dirt that landed in the paint no big deal allow this to really dry for about 10 15 minutes and then you can take a little bit of 800 grit or a thousand and just rub it out and then put some base right over this we'll allow this to dry for another good five ten minutes and we'll hit up the second coat. And we're five to 10 minutes later, it is all flashed out. Now Pedro's gonna take it a step further. Now on this coat, this is the second coat. So if we need to drop it, that means we need to uh, spray for more of a distance to make it all even. He will do that with the second coat after, right after the second coat is sprayed. And moving across to the front part of the car, he's probably gonna extend his blend into about a little bit further, maybe three or four inches further and starting to fan it out. Now with a very good paint gun, it's going to do the work for you. All you gotta do is just guide the paint. All right, you're guiding the paint gun along and allow the paint gun to help you out. All right, you've already spent a good five, six, seven hundred dollars on the paint gun. All you gotta do is show it where to go and allow it to do the work. You can see that when it puts it on, it puts it on so light, but so wet. All right, it's not putting on a thick, thick coat but when it hits the panel, it's not hitting dry. And that's the big difference between a cheaper paint gun and a little bit more expensive paint gun. Now, once the paint starts to dry or once it's put on, it will look a little bit spotty. It will look a little bit cloudy. Don't worry once again, that will all smooth out. When you spray it at a little bit lower pressure, let's say 22, 21, 20 PSI, what that does to the droplets is it allows the droplets to lay down wetter. When you have a wetter droplet, it's going to lay down smoother. Can you imagine a drier droplet? A drier droplet with higher PSI, okay, when spraying base coat, not clear coat, is going to land dry. And when it lands dry, it's gonna land crusty. And if it lands crusty right in that edge over there, well, you're gonna see a nice little mismatched blend. And that is what we call a halo, and we do not wanna do that. After the second coat, it's looking good. I'll chat with Pedro and see what he wants to do. Pedro, do you want to go right into the uh, 
drop coat right now or do you want to let it sit? After I spray the bumper, yeah. we go over. Okay, so within about a minute or so, we're going to go back over from a little bit more of a distance. Uh, the same, a little bit further. Further away, further yeah. Further away, but the same pressure, everything. The everything same. you say, just in increasing the distance a little bit. Let's drop another coat here on the bumper. Now what you will notice is that, well, bumpers and smaller parts just will not model as easily. It's the parts like the hood, the fenders, those big areas of a lot of real estate, a lot of surface area that will just model. So if you're doing something just like this, do not be too afraid. It's not going to model easy on you. You could probably get a really, really good paint job out of maybe a cheaper gun. But the better paint guns will really shine on the uh, bigger panels and uh, the lighter metallic colors. You'll be able to tell, hey, wow, that doesn't look good or hey, that looks really, really good. We're finishing up our bumper and we're going to be jumping right back to the car with about one or two minutes flash time. And the reason why is because it's still drying and we want this wet coat to land into what we have the original paint right here and that's going to help smooth it all out. And all it's really going to do is help even out the paint a little bit more and into the blend. When you're doing this technique, you can see that we're at a little bit more of a distance and it's going to evenly put on the paint a little bit better. Now you can't do this on your first or second coat because it's not gonna cover as well because you're more at a distance. But once you get into that drop coat after the second, you'll see that it really, really, really just evens everything out and it really smooths everything out. You've already got the coverage there. We're just trying to get rid of that modeling and with those two or three extra inches of distance, it really just helps everything blend out just that much better especially moving on to the blend when you have that blend area a lot more distant on your fan it's going to help out you can see how he carries from the front of the fender all the way into the door keep everything consistent do not stop when you stop that's when you can see where the blend is let's let this flash and then we'll check it over with the sunlight and see if it's ready for clear coat now it's looking really, really good. Now looking over the hood and doing an inspection, we got a little piece of lint right in here. You can see that? This is what happens with silver. When anything falls into the paint and it gets based over, it looks much darker. But we're gonna allow this to dry. Don't make the mistake of trying to wipe it right away. That's just gonna cause a lot, a lot of issues, especially with silver. If you've been down that route trying to sand silver before it's not ready, it is a mess. So we're gonna allow this to dry. Then we're gonna take the least aggressive approach we're gonna use a tack rag, see if it comes out. If not, then we'll go up to maybe a thousand grit sandpaper and just kind of uh, sand it down a little bit and put some base right over it. Let's let it dry and then we'll tack it. We've allowed it to dry. Let's start with the least aggressive method. This is a brand new tack rag. And we can see that our piece of lint is right here. And we give it a little bit of a rub down. And we can see that it's pretty much removed. There is a slight etching of the lint still where it used to be, okay? We can pick that up, but the actual um, piece of lint is removed and this is nice and smooth, see no overspray. So what we can do from there is just drop just a little bit of paint on it. After that, she's all good. Now, after Pedro laid down that beautiful last coat of base coat, we allowed it to dry and you can see how beautiful and uniform it does look. We're really good and ready for our clear coat. Now, what have really helped us out even more is using a very high temp reducer for our silver metallic paint job. That would have made it a lot easier. Now, let's say we get into the case where, you know, we keep putting coats on it and it looks dry. You need to stop at that point. And the reason why you have to stop is because you're creating something called sand piling. That means you're putting on a whole bunch of coats and it becomes like sand, like gritty. So any coat you put on top of that is never gonna lay smooth. There's no way because what it's falling onto. But luckily there is a solution for every problem. Once it's cured, about a good 20, 25 minutes, get yourself 1000 grit on a soft pad and by hand, you can lightly sand the surface it will make a little bit of a mess, a little bit dusty, but then you can wipe it all clean. Yeah, I know it's sanding in the booth, but what choice do you have when you want the paint job to come out? And let me tell you, that trick does work. 1,000 grit, a little bit of scan, a little bit of scuff, 
and then apply your two coats from there. Remembering that the extra slow reducer is gonna help you a lot. We're ready for clear. Let's go into the mixing room, see what clear we got. We're ready for our clear coat. Now this is one of PPG Superior clear coats, a very good clear coat. Now remember before we were saying, how does it mix up? Well, it mixes four to one to one. That means four parts clear. So the first number is always gonna be the product, all right? Whether it's the base coat, the sealer, the clear coat, it's gonna be the product. The other ones are gonna be the one to one. When we find our mixing cup, you see it says four to one, 10%, we're gonna ignore that column to one. So let's say we're using all of it. We'll go to five for that first one and then um, our clear, which will go to five. And then either our reducer or our hardener to this five. We'll skip this column and then we'll go to the next one right here. Now all paint cups are different, so it might not have 10%. That's just a different option. Now if we want to use less, all we would do is maybe use three in that column, then I go to this three and then to this three. So it all depends on how much you want to use. Let's get mixing and then start spraying. So we're bringing it right up there to our five, which is gonna be the max amount that we can use. So Pedro will stop right about there, okay? Now it doesn't matter which one comes next because they're both going to be one to one. Now this is the same reducer from the base coat. So you gotta make sure you check out the technical data sheets. You guys just cannot use any reducer from any paint line. They all have to match. So the next one we'll take up to right here, the next five, and we'll stop right about there. See, it's at the next five. Now we're gonna skip this 10%. If this mix was four to one to 10%, then we would add 10%. Usually you add 10% reducer or something like that, but we're gonna go up to this next five with our hardener. And you cannot forget to put the hardener in. Who here has been down the route where you forget to put the hardener in the paint. One, yeah, yeah it's, it's a mess. There's no way around it. You can't put hardener over it. There's no way. You gotta take a whole bunch of lacquer thinner rags and wipe it off. So if you've ever been down that route before, leave it in the comments. It's only funny to laugh about after the fact. We're gonna mix this stuff up. Let's head into the booth and start clearing. Well, we're ready to spray. A lot of you might ask, do we use a tack rag over it now? Well, if you're spraying in a booth and you spread it nice and clean, there's no need to, all right? If you're at home, I would definitely use a tack rag because you're gonna have a lot of overspray. We're gonna be using the Walcom Kaminaro HTE clear gun. We'll work all the way across all the panels, keeping that nice wet edge. We'll allow for about maybe five to 10 minutes in between our coats. We're only gonna do lay down two. Let's hit it.
And after that first coat of clear, you can see how Pedro stopped right here, okay? There's no clear here. So one coat of clear on the edges is enough. It's already got the UV resistance, uh, the original clear there. And if you put too many coats or pile them up on the edge, that sometimes, sometimes will appear darker than the rear door, even if there's not color there. Um, so coming across here, it looks wet, not fully wet, but wet enough. If I can pick up on camera, there is a little bit of texture, a nice little texture that will match OEM, but it needs to be a little bit flatter. We're not too concerned with areas that might be a touch dry. Leave those alone. It's a little bit dry in this area. That's okay, all right? Our second coat will clear things up. It's looking really good on our blend area here. Same thing. Now that the second first coat is done, let's hop into the second a little bit faster and let's get this thing all finished up. All right, so you saw Pedro lay down two beautiful coats of clear. Now, technical data sheet will say two to three, depending if you need to add a little bit more. Let's say you have some dirt or you wanna do some wet sand and buffing. I will tell you this, if you are gonna put a third coat on, wait a little bit longer. If your flash time says 10 minutes between coats, I want you to wait around 25 before you put that third coat on. We got two coats of uh, clear on there. Let all those solvents get out before you attack the third one. You can see it came out really, really good here on the front bumper as well. A nice texture, really no need to buff. Uh, you might have a tidbit of dirt nibs, maybe around five or six scattered throughout the hood. Very, very, very tiny, but overall a very beautiful, a very, very clean job. Um, just using the simple techniques that we use today. And moving over to our door blend, you can see how nice it looks. We wanna make sure that we're using the right techniques, we're using the right materials. You wanna stay within your brand, so if you use the, the uh, PPG primer, you use your sealer, you use your base coat, you use your clear coat all the way through, no matter what, what brand it is, make sure that you are seeing it all the way through so you can get the result you want. Well, where do we go from this point? Well, you can either bake it or just let it cure on its own. Well, Scorpion Paint is gonna go ahead and get everything assembled. He'll show us those final shots. Make sure you subscribe to his YouTube channel once again. I'll leave the information in the description. Hope you learned something and enjoyed some different content coming from my channel and Scorpion Paint. Guys, this is Brian and Pedro from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. I'll see you guys on the next one.